Hi everyone, I'm Travis and today I'm going to tell you about our work on automating the verification of distributed systems. Now we all know that distributed systems are hard to get right. They can be hard to reason about, they can be complicated to implement, and small bugs can cause large high profile failures. Now one solution to this is formal verification, which can rule out bugs in all levels of the software stack, for example, in the abstract protocol descriptions, in the implementation of said protocols, in liveness bugs, for example, and so on. Now, for this talk, we're going to be focused on the abstract protocol descriptions. Now, the problem with that is that verification is a painstaking process. It often involves crafting these difficult system invariants, proving the invariants correct, and so on. And so our solution to that is going to be more automated verification. We want to have the human do less painstaking manual proof work and offload that work to the computer instead. Of course, the problem here is that automated verification is also a hard technical problem. The problem is often undecidable as we're often dealing with these systems with an unbounded number of nodes operating over execution traces of an unbounded number of steps. Now, there's some prior work here, for example, Ivy, which automates the checking of induction invariants of systems and does so quite successfully. Um, but that leaves still the problem of automating the finding of induction invariants. And again, there's uh, some prior work which has made some good progress on in this area, such as I4 from 2019 or the separators algorithm from 2020. Although, uh, there are still many useful protocols, such as Paxos, that are still out of reach of these fully automated solutions. So that brings us to our system, Swiss, uh, which um, is another system for automatically proving safety conditions of distributed protocols. And it does scale to automate the verification of protocols like Paxos. Um, by necessity, then, it is able to handle universal and existential quantifiers in its induction invariants. Uh, some other properties it has, it can accept some additional user guidance um, to help its search, although it is otherwise fully automated. And finally, it is able to produce some partial invariants even when it doesn't fully complete its task. And we can hope that those partial invariants may still be helpful to the user. So to put this into a diagram, we have our algorithm Swiss, and it takes as input one, some abstract protocol description. And for example, a consensus protocol like Paxos. And it takes also as input some safety property that we want to prove. And for a consensus protocol, it would be something like that all nodes agree on their result. Swiss is going to find some invariants of the distributed system. And if it succeeds, it will output all those invariants as well as a proof of the safety condition. And if it doesn't succeed, it will um, output uh, some partial invariants. Um, so before we dive into the internals of Swiss, I will briefly tell you about what invariants are. So an invariant is a statement about the distributed system which holds true at every point in its execution. Now, there are a couple of things we need from an invariant. One, we need it to be useful. We need it to actually help us prove the safety condition we're interested in. And two, we need it to be inductive. The invariant should by itself be strong enough to prove that it remains true. To be a little more precise, we're going to model the distributed system as a state machine. And since the invariant is inductive, we can use the fact that it holds at one state to show that it holds also at the next state. And then by induction, it will hold at all points in time. Now, the safety condition usually by itself is not inductive. And that's why we often have to find some stronger invariant, which is inductive. For example, to prove Paxos correct, uh, we need an invariant like this. And this is the sort of predicate that we need to automate the finding of. Of course, this is very big. If we consider all syntactically valid logical predicates that are around the size, there are something like 10 to the 100 of them. And that's a fairly large haystack to pluck a needle out of. However, one thing that helps us is at least here, this invariant breaks down into pieces. For example, these pieces 
are all inductive on their own. The pieces down at the bottom are not inductive on their own, although they do become inductive when the earlier pieces are assumed. And we can imagine that these individual pieces might be easier to find on their own. And so we designed Swiss to find invariants that have a structure similar to this one. So just to dive into the internals, we designed Swiss as a two-phase algorithm. The first phase, which we call breadth, takes as input the abstract protocol description, and it casts a wide net to find any and all invariants it can about this protocol. And this phase tends to find many small invariants. The second phase of our algorithm, which we call the finisher, also takes as input the safety property. And its goal is to find one more invariant to complete the proof of that safety property. And this phase tends to find one big invariant. And if it succeeds, then it will output the invariants and the proof of the safety condition. Otherwise, at least we found some invariants from the first phase. And so both these phases have their own strengths. And so we found some value from putting them together. To be a little more concrete, let's consider what happens when we run the finisher phase searching for trying to prove Paxos is correct. We'll configure the search to look for an invariant out of all predicates, which are at most six terms large. So here there are about 100 trillion such possible predicates. And it takes about 100 milliseconds on average to check, that any, to check if any one of them will be inductive. And so of course, that is not a feasible brute force search algorithm. Now we can whittle down the space a little bit if we note that some of the predicates in the space will be equivalent by some symmetry or other, although that still leaves 200 billion of them. The next optimization we utilize is a technique called counterexample guided synthesis. And the gist of that is that when, one when you find one predicate that fails to be inductive, you can use it to narrow down your search base in the future. And this is very effective as we can see that now the number of predicates we have to consider is only 155 and that's far more feasible. Uh, so again, this is the finisher phase. The breath phase is similar, although we run it on a smaller search space by necessity. And we also have one additional step where we filter out any predicate which is logically implied by previously found invariants as those predicates would not be useful. And so that whittles down the space to something manageable. Although we can see that here, we went from 820 million down to about 2000. And so um, the takeaway here is that uh, while counterexample guided synthesis is effective uh, in either case, it is far more effective in the case where we are directed by the safety condition we're trying to prove. And that is part of why we find value in having two phases to the algorithm. Um, we want to have our search be guided by the desired safety condition whenever it is possible to do so. So for our evaluation, we ran Swiss on 27 different protocols, including six Paxos variants. And we found that Swiss solves 18 out of those, uh, including Paxos and as well as a variant uh, flexible Paxos and also multi-Paxos if some additional user guidance is given on the input search space. The user has to tell Swiss uh, what variables to quantify over uh, in its invariant search. We also did a comparative evaluation to previous uh, invariant synthesis systems. So here we compare to I4 and we found that Swiss solved uh, many more benchmarks than I4 because it's able to handle those that require existential quantifiers. Although on the other hand, we often found that I4 was much faster on any benchmark that it was able to solve. We compared to the separators algorithm from this summer and separators is able to hand existential invariants so it handles many of the same benchmarks as Swiss, although there are still some like Paxos and flexible Paxos that it cannot scale to. Although there are also some benchmarks that go the other direction. And so, and in our paper, we do evaluate the uh, benchmarks that Swiss is not able to solve and analyze what makes them hard for Swiss's particular approach. And that includes uh, some of the variants of Paxos that are still out of reach of any of the current approaches. Also in our paper, we uh, measure some of our individual optimizations 
as well as talk about optimizations that turn out to not help. We quantify parallelizability. We quantify our use of the SMT solvers. And we also measure uh, Swiss's performance on restricted search bases. In conclusion, Swiss is able to scale invariant synthesis to protocols not tackled previously. Uh, Swiss has some differing strengths relative to prior approaches, which suggests that there are still some ideas that can be combined and improved to uh, make something which is better than any of the individual solutions. And so I'm fairly optimistic about the future of this field. Thank you. <laughs>